first of all, I would like to thank most sincerely the Associazione Comunità Papa Giovanni XXIII for organizing this side event. Uh, it allows us to present a meaningful Italian experience besides showcasing how to contribute to achieving an ambitious goal which can be realized even within small things is being closer to us than normally expected. In this fast-changing world where instability, conflicts, violations of human rights have generated unprecedented migratory flows and forced movement of people, such initiative contributes to protecting the dignity of all human beings and overall to building inclusive, participatory and tolerant societies where equality and human rights are valued and respected. The Humanitarian Corridors is a project launched by Italy to help migrants in host countries. Though small in numbers, it's of, it is of great relevance in terms of principle underpinning it. Indeed, Italy deems that these principles should inform our migration policies. Established through uh, the cooperation between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, the Ministry of Interior, civil society organization, in particular Sant'Egidio Sant community with us today, Federation of Evangelical Churches and Tavola Valdese of the Waldensian Evangelical Church. The Humanitarian Corridor is a resettlement and humanitarian admission program aimed at providing aid to refugees and other vulnerable migrants who are hosted in neighboring countries. As said, this program is the result of a cooperation between the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Interior, IOM, and UNHCR, but it's also drawn on private and community resources to enable beneficiaries to be resettled with the support of private citizens, including from faith-based groups. In this regard, let me underline the importance of the contribution and support by groups linked to different religions that work together to help people regardless of their religion. As said at the outset, this program is still small in numbers. We envisage to resettle 1,000 people in a two-year term. So far, we have moved almost 200 people, mostly Syrians coming from Lebanon's refugee camps. And right now, while we speak, 81 more people are arriving in Rome. Let me explain why we think this project encompasses all principles that should guide our migrant policies. The first goal is to normalize the situation. The media continue daily to provide tremendous information about the emergency of the current migration influx. Our government has always refused to use this term. Migration is not an emergency in Italy for two reasons. Firstly, Italy is facing an unusual, an unusual flow of migrants coming through its shores since 2011, and perhaps earlier than that. Thus, five years later, we cannot call it an emergency anymore. Secondly, and most importantly, we can use the term emergency to stress the difficult situation that are now facing countries like Lebanon or Turkey, where millions of refugees are hosted. This is also the case with many African countries like Kenya. Countries that are not rich like, like Italy, but nevertheless keep hosting people despite their limited resources. Therefore, going back to the Humanitarian Corridor Project, I'm pleased to emphasize that this is the expression of a true solidarity and of a burden that is shared between Italy and our Mediterranean neighboring countries. In fact, although Italy together with Greece as a border country is at the forefront of the crisis, with 97% of the migration flows reaching our borders, we do want to work with countries like Lebanon, to which the project is aimed, at least, as a starting point. Even more importantly, the beneficiaries of the Humanitarian Corridor Project are vulnerable migrants. We are not taking, talking about refugees, but about people with special needs, people who need special protection, like minors or women with their small children. The twofold aim of this project is to help people to be resettled in Italy and to offer them basic services like health and education, adequate living conditions, and the definition of their legal status. They have reached Italy in a secure and legal way, thus avoiding the dangerous and perilous crossing of the Mediterranean that so many deaths has caused in recent years. One of the positive effects of this program is that it has diminished the importance of the business-like model of smugglers and traffickers of human beings, earning from the despair of people fleeing for a better life. Before their departure, the beneficiaries of this program are screened from a security standpoint by our Ministry of Interior. Needless to say, as far as security is concerned, 
It is far better to proceed in this way than managing it when thousands of people reach our shores with the impact on our border control and police forces. Last but not least, I would like to highlight the role of civil society. Resettled people are welcomed by the hosting civil society organizations that are sponsoring this program. As mentioned earlier, they are not provided just with accommodation or schooling, but they are provided with community life. Moreover, the involvement of civil society has a beneficial domino effect also on us as the hosting country. It helps us to build together with the people who host the beneficiaries of this program a counter-narrative depicting migrants for what they are, human beings in need, human beings who can build a life in our country human beings that can contribute to the development of our society. We should firmly fight against the equation of migrants as dangerous people, or even worse, as potential terrorists. To do so, we need your help, namely of those involved in small projects of great impact, who can share their experiences and the life with all those who are resettled in Italy. Italy's commitment in addressing the challenge we face today is based on our strong sense of solidarity. Desperate people in the hands of traffickers and smugglers undertake desperate journeys. But let me conclude by saying that we need to work together, governments, international organizations, and civil society organizations, to address the root causes of this tragedy. In a spirit of shared responsibility and solidarity, the international community has to comprehensively, comprehensively act upon. Thank you.